Hello folks, I'm back again. I've got a quick paint table update. I haven't been painting as much this summer. Uh, I've been running around enjoying some summer fun and I encourage you to do the same. Uh, this last pull from Dungeons and Lasers, the Dulcere campaign, was so huge and so enormous. Um, not just because of the giant epic creatures that it, that it, uh, it thrust upon us, but also the many, many, many small, small little uh, projects. Now, I thought I'd finish this whole box until I went to read the back of it again, and I noticed that the Devourer of Sanity uh, I have not painted yet. There was actually two of them, I believe. So one of them's in here, and one of them's in the other one. And the other weird thing about these Dungeons and Lasers box sets is like they'll have pieces of things. Like it's got part of the uh, the Mimic Dragon in this one and part of it in the other one. If you'd like to see the video with the Mimic Dragon and stuff already painted, uh, I did a video a couple of months ago or a month ago or so. Uh, I've been kind of slowly documenting my progress with all the Dungeons and Laser stuff from the previous campaign and this campaign and probably moving forward into caves. I basically went all in on the caves. I didn't get any of it pre-painted or anything. So I guess we'll see how that goes. Every time they do a campaign, I spend a little bit more money. Uh, what's funny is I don't use any of this in war games. I just build them and paint them. I have a mind to. I, I have all these games I'd like to play with these. Or even have a full Dungeons and Dragons game. Why not? You know, <laughs> with all this uh, 3D terrain and stuff that I've made. But haven't had an occasion to yet. I like to think that one day I'm going to pivot from painting all the time to actually playing with all this stuff. So... Uh, I don't sell it or anything like that either, so it's been it's been a little nutty. But I enjoy painting them, so that's that's good enough reason to do it, I guess. Okay, so without further ado, let's dig into these things real quickly. I'm going to tell you what I did and show you uh, where I got. I tried to follow the paint schemes I saw on the box and some of the artwork inside the PDFs that I got for the Dulcere campaign and stuff like that. Uh, a lot of these colors weren't my first choices for colors for things. Like, let's start with the Kraken here. This is my pretty pink Kraken. <laughs> it's kind of a purpley pink, uh, I guess. And that was, I, I think I got really close. If you look at the artwork for the Kraken on the box and stuff, I think I got really close with the color. Uh, this one was a really interesting uh, thing to paint. I guess my biggest advice is just leave the base off. You know, prime it without, uh, prime it with the base unglued and go through there and that way you can get inside of this thing and paint all the details inside the mouth. Uh, I didn't go crazy on the details inside the mouth just because it's it's dark. <laughs> it's hard, it's actually hard to look in there and see anything, even just like with your eyeball and stuff. You can shine a light and see all kinds of stuff and you should paint it to some degree, but don't go nuts on the details for stuff that's basically inside of there. You can do some real subtle things with the colors and stuff and still and it still look really neat. This is a big model. It's not super big like the turtle, but it's a fairly large model. But uh, the way it assembles and stuff, I think it's going to be really easy to store. So I'm a little relieved, unlike some of these other ones we'll get to in a little bit. Something else that came with this one is it's got all these little individual uh, Kraken arms. Um, uh, that that's really neat to me that this model seems like uh, if you put it up in a scenario It's gonna be sort of planted in one area and it would send those arms out to make its attacks and stuff. So uh, I Really like that it left these kind of things uh, Detached so that you can actually attack with them without moving the entire model around and stuff I think that that's really neat and, and Seems more like what I would expect from this guy He's gonna be reaching out and grabbing you and like pulling you back into his mouth versus uh, trying to chase you around and stuff by himself. So up next, we have the Undying Queen Anara. So this uh, is, seems like some sort of fairy dragon queen thing. <laughs> I confess, I did not go through the bestiary and look up what each of these things are, are doing. I just sort of, I, I, I looked at the art and I just sort of gave my best impression of, of maybe what this would look like. I, I try to do some things I uh, do differently. Like I saw she had black horns. I decided to go with like a deep blue for her horns and her hooves and stuff. Um, I'm not too sure what these like these hand things coming out of the top of her torso are and stuff. These little claws that she's got sort of embedded. So I, I assume that she's some sort of a magical creature and possibly a monster giving all the skeletons and stuff. She's got a skull in her hand and, and a bunch at her feet and stuff. So... Uh, uh, I painted her armor up, kind of this basic red. 
I went through and just kind of found my own color scheme for a lot of these different things and, uh, and got it done. This wasn't my favorite of the models and stuff. I, I thought it was neat and kind of interesting, but uh, it wasn't one, it's definitely one that I just painted to get finished. <laughs> Okay, up next we have the wolf rake. Now the wolf rake, uh, uh, as depicted on the box, was a really dark, dark creature. It looks like something that would be skulking around at night using its natural dark complexion to, to sort of camouflage it as it moves through the ruins and stuff. It looks like he's got, has seen some action. He's got a, a, looks like a flag implanted in him and a sword and stuff like that. I kept this guy with a lot of really dark colors. Uh, but I wanted it to seem like maybe that's the, his uh, wings, especially sort of leathery. So I made them a little bit more reflective. I used uh, rattling grime instead of the typical grays and stuff. I used I used the gray on the on the hair and some of the scales, and then rattling grime on all the skin. And then I did a, a lot of dry brushing and stuff to kind of bring out the details and stuff of this guy. Uh, he's a little difficult to see, but that's kind of the way he was depicted on the art too. So. I added enough con contrast to where uh, under good light and stuff you can see him really well. But he's definitely a, a creature of the night. Next we have like, I think his name's Kays? Is it K-O-A-S? Is that right? Kaoz? K-A-O-Z. Kaoz. Just Kaoz. And he's, uh, he's most likely a necromancer. He seems to be riding... A whole bunch of body, writhing bodies and stuff. This is uh, probably one of the most disturbing models I've painted <laughs> so far from uh, Dungeons and Lasers. It, he's definitely giving a lot, uh, a lot of Warhammer vibe on here. Um, <laughs> he's got a real chaos uh, Warhammer 40k vibe to him and stuff too. I think he could be applicable in a, a number of different games. This guy looks really neat. He was really easy to paint. He's going to be much harder to store, however. Uh, I feel like uh, these little chains and stuff, they've already broken on me once. Like while I was painting it, I dropped it and popped one of these off. They do glue back together uh, pretty easily and they end up being pretty sturdy. I haven't broken anything with this hips plastic. It seems like it's, it's a really sturdy plastic. But, but alas, I think storing this thing is going to be quite difficult with the little with these little thin chains and stuff uh, sticking up, but I'll, uh, he'll be on display for at least a year or so. I guess, so I guess I don't have to worry about it right away. <laughs> and folks, that's all I got for you today. Let me know what you'd like to see next. Uh, feel free to comment if you're following the Dulcere stuff. Uh, what, do, what would you like to see from that next? If you want to see that big airship? I'm thinking about doing that. I've already primed a whole bunch of smaller things, but it's, it's been much harder for me to want to dive into these little teeny tiny projects. It's much easier to feel good about completing the big Kraken. <laughs> Even though he's about to go Kraken on my shelf uh, uh, in here in just a minute. But I'd love to hear from you. Thanks again for tuning in. Enjoy your games, and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.